The S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100. We got to make this video short, sweet, to the point. I got to get out of here. But what do we know? NVIDIA, earnings, earnings, earnings. They beat. They beat. That's the first thing we're talking about. If you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so. Post this on Twitter. You can go check this out if you want. So their earnings came out $13.5 I think their estimate was like $12 billion, So smash up 88% from quarter number one. 101% year over year. Uh, that was the big thing there. We look at what's happening on the broad market. Expectations, growth outlook. NVIDIA sees revenue of $16 billion plus or minus 2% into next quarter. Okay? Third quarter, that's what they're expecting. That's where they see the movement. That's where they see us going. We look over as well. The NVIDIA board also approved a $25 billion share repurchase without expiration. Okay? Wow. Wow. Now, first thing, of course, we know what happened. We bet the left testicle, not the right one. The right one's the, the one that's been dipped dipped in gold, right? But the, the left one, it's still very, pretty valuable. It's like platinum, but it's, it's still real valuable, right? We, had, we bet that one on last video. Go check it out. Like I said, it's a bet my left testicle. These boys beat, right? So we're still playing in line with kind of expectations for the week, right? We knew. We had some interesting data that would come up. We had more interesting data this morning with home sales. We'll talk about here in a second. But then we had NVIDIA beginning of or middle of the week. And then we had ultimately top G, top dog, Andrew Tate of the stock market. Am I right? Jerome Powell coming in hot. I feel like we haven't heard from Captain America himself in months, to be honest. I feel like I haven't heard from my guy. Like, how are we doing, Jerome? How's the economy? Where are we going? Right? We hear from him Friday, Jackson Hole. Right, I think we had like a four percent move on the market the last time he spoke at Jackson Hole. So, food for thought. Now, looking at the market, what's happening here? Okay, so what I will say is, Nvidia looks fantastic. It's, it's and, and that earnings beat. I honestly think this earnings was more bullish than the previous earnings. Personal opinion. Love me, hate me. I'll probably give you a little rant later on in the video, but I want to. I want to get through this. I want to get through the bulk of this video for you. But before we go any further, hey, consider liking. Right, one little click right? Help a channel in need, right? We do all this free content for you. Okay. So consider liking and subscribing. Also too, the discord link is down below. If you are interested, I never want anyone to feel like they have to. That's why we do so much free content. Also, also content. I think I said that wrong. Also every day, 10 30 AM central, 11 30 Eastern and sometime if you're on California's time, but we don't care about those guys. Am I right? We don't care about them, right? I, I still love you, but we're live here on the channel answering questions. So you never have to pay, but if you want to get involved and understand what we're doing throughout the day and you don't want to monitor discord and you want to, you know, you want you don't want to have to sit all over Twitter, right? You know, then maybe discord's for you. Seeing what we traded on the, the day. The only trade that I got in today was of course, a meta. We had meta over top of 289 support. We mentioned it yesterday. Targets 295 and 298. Right there, 292.7. Started going long, started pushing up, started came at 295. We'll start scaling out there. And then, of course, where we run to, I'm tap dancing today. Woo! You start giving me some good action, and I start, I start cha cha. I start moving real smooth. Am I right? So, again, good action on the day. Now, let's get to this. Now, again, you're going to, I'm going to tell you something because, and I don't even want to talk about it. I really don't. But I have to because everyone and their mother is going to be discussing this. So, first up, Q, Q, Q. If you look on the daily chart, look, this is everyone, everyone is going to be talking about it. And honestly, it's in play now. It's in play. As much as I hate it, it's in play. Okay. So let's just delete everything. Just leave that there. Your neckline's a little ugly. I'm not going to lie, but we'll get to that in a second. You got your head and shoulders here, boys and girls. You got it. It's, it's beautiful. It's formed out. You're going to open up probably right there. As of right now in the after hours, you're at 372 right now. You can actually see if I open that up right there. You're at it, so congratulations. You win. Head and shoulders, it's there. I really, ah, it's so frustrating. But anyways, we're there. Head and shoulders, okay. I will say I was wrong. I did not think the head and shoulders would get back up here. I thought we kind of chilled chill down here, but we're there. So that's where we're at. That's how we're moving. We are hitting a bit of a brick wall here in the after hours, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's unlikely that we like sit here. I'm just telling you, like NVIDIA, those earnings, I'm those earnings were incredible. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know how to adjust. I don't know how to say it anymore. I'll post more about it on Twitter, but those earnings were incredible. They literally are like three Xing their revenue output in the quarter in the in like two and half a year. Like really think about that. Quarter one, they did like six, seven million. 
quarter two, we just did 13 million, like doubling up. And like, okay, next, they're like, all right, next, next quarter, mm, 16 billion, we'll be safe with that one. And they literally were sold out of all their supplies. It was absolutely crazy. So I think you're gonna get some love here. Um, and we did see love across the board from a lot of equities. You know, Microsoft, again, I posted this on Twitter earlier today as well. You started breaking out of this downward channel on the daily. You broke above and you got above VWAP on the daily. And it was just a clear shot up from there. Here in the after hours, you're at like 233. You hit like highs of 235 almost, but you're at two, uh, 333. Um, so that's where we're at now. But again, you're going to start seeing this roll over into a lot of names. Again, AVGO, I kept telling you guys to watch out for this one. AVGO back at 900. Big, big, big name there. The biggest name that I told you guys when it came to NVIDIA earnings, what to look for was AMD because they're just so cheap. Um, and I think AMD is probably, I I kind of like go go through these on the channel of like stocks. I think they're just massively undervalued that are buying opportunities. Um, you know, Amazon and Google were the ones that we talked about so much in the beginning of the year, like Google below 100, Amazon below 100. Those are easy money plays, like very low risk. But now when we look here, like a lot of these names are breaking out. Like we look at Google, like, I mean, you look at what's happening here on Google, bull flag, you go, I mean, that's just incredible to look at there. And you have another bull flag kind of forming out there. Then you go to something like the weekly and you really zoom out. And it's just like, dude, dear God, like Google looks actually incredible. Like you're, you're trying to, trying to finally break this 230 or 132 level. You get above this. I mean, you have upside into 140 and then maybe even all time highs, very similar pattern to Microsoft and some of these other players and names that broke out all time highs. Other one was Amazon we mentioned, which is still kind of low down there. I'm not going to lie. You're balancing on the weekly 90 MA, but um, I, I still think a Amazon's a great name. Don't don't take me wrong. But I look at AMD and I look at other players in the sector and you can believe all you want that AI is a bubble. I don't really care. Cool. Like whoever's been short, if anyone's shorting NVIDIA, I'm just like, you're out of all the things to short, NVIDIA is not the one in my opinion. So we look at AMD and I just, I, I, I fail to believe that you should be, I mean, this morning you're around 105, but you know, you'd be 60 points, 50 points away from highs. Like that's crazy to me. I think it's, I think it's grossly undervalued. It's a great name down here. I keep saying it. Um, but yeah, so in AMD, great performer doing really well. I told you yesterday, if you bought the 90 puts for January, 2020, go look at these contracts, by the way, don't just take my word for it. The 90 puts for January, 2025, and the 150 calls for January 2025, it's a very profitable trade. It protects you. It, goes, it can go either way. You'd probably make money. Upside, obviously, like I said, leads you with the most money. Um, but that name, that I mean, it's already moving like crazy. Like the 150s, I think they opened at like $12. They ran up to like $15 today. I mean, tomorrow they're probably going to be closer to $16, $17. So again, that trade there already alone is up almost 50% in just a matter of like 24 hours of talking about it. So there's still a lot of great names, still a lot of great plays. You just got to really be looking for them. And yeah. So again, uh, looking at the market, I said all I'd say this. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, I, again, you know, I, I've been kind of preaching, be careful, be careful, be careful, be patient, be patient, be patient. I can't say that I'm, you know, enough, but you know what I need? I need to go to the top floor for this. We need to go to the tippity top floor. I need to give you all the information. I need to break this down for you as simple as possible. Can to give you just my two cents so far the week. I think you've gotten a little bit more bullish than I anticipated on NASDAQ. I'm not going to lie. And when I look over, I'm looking at, looking at my notes, right? When we, when we look at this action though, overall, like as far as price point, I'm a little, I was a little off on how high we'd get it pushed up. But what I will say the overall plan is still intact of kind of ugly, choppy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with NVIDIA earnings into Thursday, probably get upside. We, again, we, there's no doubt that NVIDIA was going to like miss here. There's just no doubt in my mind, but I do think tomorrow into Friday is, is where people can lose every, like they can, they can really lose all their gains and I, I'm not the guy that's going to go all into these plays and go crazy, um, but I am fully aware that some of you are. Some of you are like, <laughs> Tyler, I'm going to become a millionaire tomorrow, believe it or not, right? And th that's really some of the people's mentality here. You read the comments down below, like, should it go up? Should it go down? I'm like, dear God, you need help. So understand what Jerome, and what I said yesterday still stands with what Barkin said, what some of these Fed members have been saying, you got to be careful. Now, I cannot predict what Fed Powell is going to say. And nobody on the internet, okay, believe believe it or not, there's no YouTuber that has the magic crystal ball, they shake up, they give you the answer, like, oh my God, I'm right. 
they'd be working at the top hedge funds, believe it or not. Okay, so that's where they would be. So when we look at what's happening, when we look at how we're moving here, I'm telling you now, be careful. It's it's very likely Powell comes in and says we are not changing the inflation target. I think it's almost as likely as Powell comes in and says we're not changing the inflation target to 2%, from 2%, we're not moving it up. And if he does that and says we're going to not cut rates until we see that level go down, I, I think we could see some downside. I think it's totally possible, right? But there's a lot of other things he has to say along with that as well. And again, we want to see his overall plan. I'll be able to give you a better viewpoint after Powell speaks, and I'll be able to tell you how I believe we're going to move from that point. Uh, but again, remember, next week too, we get PCE data. The week after that, I believe CPI starts to come in. So more data starts to flow in with those oil prices. But what I will say on another good note is oil prices have started to slow down, which which is good. Very good news there. So those are visuals you have to be taking into account. The really big good news from today as well, besides NVIDIA doing monstrous numbers and proving that they're the new titan of industry, um, is home sales. Existing home sales did drop and they've kind of been steadily declining. But we saw a 4.4% upside growth month over month on new home sales, right? Now, it wasn't incredible. It wasn't great. I also had a, a tweet or an X. I don't know what they're called. And I don't know what it's called anymore. But on Twitter or whatever it is, Elon's app, right? I posted on there, the majority of people that are buying. The majority of people that are buying homes are millennials or Gen Z. And these are first, first home buyers. Um, and I will say, maybe they're going to FHA, maybe they're not. It's hard to get all the data on that. But when we look at what's happening there, the people that are buying, it's not a large number. So when people start thinking, oh, the housing market collapsed, I don't necessarily think that. I don't think we're gonna have this massive default on people buying homes because a lot of people are still locked into their rates underneath 4%. So understand that. Uh, but to argue what the Fed is trying to say, and they're gonna probably push this narrative because a lot of Fed members have been saying the same thing, this idea that the housing market has potentially bottomed, I don't believe if we continue to raise rates, okay? You will continue to slow if we continue to raise rates, okay? Rates on home home loan rates have reached the highest level since I believe 2000. So kind of crazy, kind of terrible there, but that's kind of where give and go. And those are things that I just think you need to take into account going into this Fed meeting in Jackson Hole, Fed meeting Jackson Hole, same thing, right? So back to the charts, a few more things. Okay, I'm gonna run through like these fundamentals really quick before we go into anything else. And I'm not gonna go over too many stock charts, so I'm sorry, I don't wanna get your hopes up. Now, first thing, DXY, really nice breakout this morning, wicked, came back down, consolidating back in that range. Not loving that, but still. You also saw yields slow down a lot today. A lot of move down yields, 5, 2, 10, 30. Like I said, unprobable that yields will break out to the upside before Friday. It just doesn't make logical sense. I also have said you've seen a lot of hedging across the board, okay? Like we saw yields moving up. We saw DXY, all these things. And VIX is also too, just want to highlight. Even though you're getting this move, I mean, you're still dropping on VIX here but you're still kind of relaxed here on VIX. I, I want that to be noted, right? You've only really moved down like $2 on VIX despite moving up on the NASDAQ, for instance, on the past two days, almost 700 points. Like really take that into account right now. You've moved up 700 points on the NASDAQ and VIX, granted it's, it's in regards to, to the S&P, but VIX is only down $2, worth mentioning. Okay, I just want that to be said highlighted, whatever, very important in my opinion. So VIX, I think it just signifies a lot of people are hedging positions. They are net long, but they still definitely have positions like protecting themselves. I can't believe I have to do like, like break down what a hedge fund does, but it's like, it's in the name. Okay, so favorite names that I'm watching right now. I mean, obviously for me, I really like AMD. I'm a big fan here, uh, but it's more of dated positions if you're looking at anything there. Um, and what you're really looking from AMD is, can you get above 122? If you can ever mount 122, and again, this is not going to happen most likely tomorrow, but if we can mount 122, I really do believe you're bullish. You'll, you should get some breakout and break local highs or 52 week highs. Okay. Um, definitely watch that. Microsoft, big fan here. Definitely watching as we move back into 335. But again, it's just like, you're going to be gapping up tomorrow. So it's like, as I talk about these, I, they're not great setups. They're just not because you're already going to be gapping up so much. You're going to have to wait and you're going to have to be on Twitter because I'll post charts tomorrow as we're setting up. 
but I just can't anticipate how much we pull back, if we pull back, or where we're going to be at. So giving you like day trades for tomorrow is going to be very difficult. I want to be really transparent on that. And the last thing I want to mention is going to be Netflix. Okay, I want to be really transparent. Um, I don't know. People sometimes say I don't like to, I don't like talk about when I lose, and I I like to be as transparent as possible. Um, I only had a few contracts on now. I had like two or no, I had three. I had three. I don't want to lie. I had three. Um, for September fifteenth, they were like five bucks about a pop. Um, I ended up closing those at like down like thirty five percent this morning. Like yeah, about that much, right? I might be overestimating. Uh, but giving you a visual, of what we were looking for there, right? So where did we start talking about this play? Right, we started talking about 440. We got in, or I got in personally when we broke down from 418, about like 412. I started selling my position around 400, 395 down here. Then you pop back up, right? That's kind of how we've been taking place. And the goal was to move back into the 200 SMA and then reject. Well, we ended yesterday obviously at the 200 SMA on the weekly, right there as you can see. And then we gapped up this morning. As you gapped up, it invalidated the head and shoulders in my opinion. Maybe it was a trap. But based on the news, which also too, if you're following on Twitter, I don't have to do this, but I like to do this because I like to help you guys no matter what. So what did I do? At open this morning, again, at open, you can literally look time. There's all timestamps here. 8, 11, 19 minutes for market open. I gave everyone the news. Subscriber gains, market research says, basically saying that Netflix is gaining subscribers, but they're not talking about the churn rate or how much they're losing. This is bullish news on it. Every time we get any type of subscriber news, which again, you cannot anticipate news. It's the one factor in TA that is negated. You can have a beautiful, beautiful downtrend on Tesla or whatever stock you're talking about. But if news comes in on Tesla or Elon Musk or Tim Cook with Apple, guess what? You're probably going to bounce, right? It's just, it's just a factor of what it is. So once I came out, you know, that's just the way it went, right? That's, that's just the way she goes. News trumps TA. So again, you popped up. That's when I got out of my trade immediately cut it at open. Um, some people were like, Hey, it's at four 30 taller. What do I do? I'm like, um, buddy have a trade plan. I don't know. You're a grown man. You got to have a trade plan. Sorry. Crazy world. Right. Um, but again, like I always say end of the day, I'm gonna leave you with this. It comes down to you. At the end of the day, when you make money, do do from this channel, do y'all send me a check? Do I ask for money? Do I ask for anything in return? I don't. End of the day, I don't. So when you lose, understand. It's just you out there. You're responsible for your decisions. You're responsible for your trades. It is what it is. People made money on AMB today. Did I say, hey, where's that Tyler tax? Hey, <laughs> this ain't free. Didn't, right? Of course. I try to give you guys as much information as possible. I try to help you. And ultimately the point of this channel is to give something that I didn't have when I started learning. Someone that I thought was transparent or at least honest with winners and losers and trying to teach every step of the way. Bear market, bull market, in between, Fed meetings, fundamentals, everything in between. I'm trying to give you hopefully anything and everything you could try to learn on this channel. If you ask questions, we're gonna answer them every single time. Me and Jay are passionate about what we do here. We're passionate about helping you guys. We're passionate about, you know what? Being the best in the business here. I don't know another YouTube channel that does what we do. I don't know another YouTube channel that gives as much free content as us. When it comes to live streams, when it comes to uh, we don't sell a course, you don't join Discord to get a course. If you want to learn, it's right here fully for free. Education. It's all in there. If you have questions, you can ask us on Twitter. You can ask us on a live stream at any point in time. So just understand that if you're willing to put in the work, me and Jay are willing to help you out as well. You don't have to pay an incredible amount of money. If you want to join Discord, awesome. We appreciate your support. But at the end of the day, we're here for you guys. You got to put some work in though.